Hey friend, thanks for listening today. I'm evangelist Mike McCurry. You're listening to the Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast. Have a special treat for you today. Dr. Paul Levine will be getting to the midpoint of a message he preached decades ago, but it still is so true today, is such a timely thought. I don't know about you, but I am sometimes difficult to deal with. And the problem is, I'm not just difficult for other people to deal with. Sometimes I make it hard for God to get my attention. I don't know if you've ever been there. I don't know if you've ever felt the same way. I don't know if you've ever either intentionally or maybe just through ignorance ignored God's leading. I hope that's not the case. I hope you can say, I've never done that. But if we're honest, we probably have. The thought today is this. Dr. Paul is preaching a message from decades ago. It's still so true. It's called Horses and Mules. It'll make more sense in just a moment. But the theme, the thought today is this. God will get your attention. Have you ever tried to talk to someone that was purposefully ignoring you? Maybe it was a toddler. Maybe it was a child of yours that didn't want to hear what you had to say. Maybe it was time for bed, and they're acting like, "Ah, I I can't hear you. It's a little bit annoying, isn't it? It's a little frustrating. How annoying, how irritating do you think that is for God Almighty to try to speak to his children like you and like me, and we act like a rebellious teenager, a rebellious toddler? I want nothing of what you have for me, God. When we know in our heart of hearts that God's way is the best way. In just a moment, Dr. Paul is going to dive into this thought. God will get your attention. I'm going to ask you, would you consider coming to the thought, diving into the broadcast today with a soft and malleable heart? What do I mean by that? If God speaks to you through the age of old words of Dr. Paul Levine, and the Holy Spirit tugs on your heartstrings and says, that's you. You are in the wrong. You have some correction needed. You need to pay attention to what Dr. Paul's saying. Would you come, even before Dr. Paul begins speaking here in just a moment, would you come to this thought ready for God to speak to you? Don't come with a hard-hearted or hard-headed attitude. Let's be ready for God to speak to us. I want to thank you for being a part today, but don't just be a part. Take part. Listen intently. This is from a message titled Horses and Mules, preached by Dr. Paul Levine many years ago at Bill Rice Ranch. But listen now. And God knows how to do it, boy. God can get your attention. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, for example, Jonah... It, for God to get Jonah's attention, God stuck him in the belly of a fish, and he got his attention in there. Remember the other day I told you about a young man in prison, Kansas State University, uh, 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 prison Leavenworth? God got his attention in jail. If God has to put you in jail to get your attention, he'll do it. If he has to put you in a hospital to get your attention, he'll do it. If he has to break your hind leg to get your attention, he'll do it. He's got all kinds of ways of doing it. But he knows how to put the b- a bit and a bridle on you. Yes, sir. All right. Now, here's a mule that's stubborn and rebellious, and, go- and you have to get their attention. And if God has to get your attention with a fence post, he'll do it. There's an old story about a mule. A guy bought, you know, he bought a mule, and the mule wasn't any good. And he went back to the guy he bought it from. He said, this mule's no good. He won't, he won't do anything for me. And, and, he, and the former owner came, and he says, I'll show you how to do it. He picked up a fence post, and he clobbered the mule, knocked him down. The mule got up, and he told the mule what to do, and the mule did it. And uh, the new owner says, well, he, he said, uh, he, mule's no good with me. And the first owner says, you have to get his attention. And he says, I got his attention with a fence post. Now, young folks, I want to warn you about something. If you force God to do it, he'll use the fence post on you. He's got ways of getting your attention. And you won't like it. And it'll be terrible. And it'll be horrible. See? So let God have his way with you. Because otherwise you're heading for trouble. Now, what about a horse? Well, a horse. um, You know, an unbroken horse is no good. A horse is stubborn and has his own will. You know what they do with them? They shoot them. 
Uh, Pete Rice tells about a, a horse that he had right here on the Bill of Rice Ranch, and he would not be broken. And Pete took him out, dug a big hole over here, and shot him and buried him. See? All right. So horses, get uh, they, they'll, they'll run away. And no matter how beautiful a horse is, see? And uh, no matter how strong and no matter how exciting that horse is and no matter how intelligent and what a good pedigree, if he's not broken, he's no good. And neither are you, young man, young lady. If you don't give your will to God, you'll never be any good to God at all. Now, you know what horses do sometimes? They run away. When I grew up on a farm, we went to church horse and buggy. We had a horse one time and ran away. You know what my dad did with him? I saw this. My dad was coming down the road in a, what we call a spring wagon, and instead of turning in our lane, the horse, boy, that horse was going. He was going full speed ahead. He was, he was having a big time. He said, man, this is great. I'm doing my own thing. And that fellow back there in the wagon is not telling me what to do. I'm not going to turn in there. I'm going to just go where I want to go. And he was just running like 60. You know what my dad did? Two things. He let him run. My dad just loosened up on the reins a little bit and said, okay, his name is Prince. Okay, Prince, run now. Boy, he ran. He ran about two miles. And when he got about two miles from home, you know what my dad did then? My dad turned him around, and, and Prince was out of the running notion now. He's tired. And uh, my dad turned Prince around, and my dad said to Prince, I thought you wanted to run. I'm going to fix it now so you will run. And my dad got the whip out, and, man, he whipped that horse all the way home and made him run. And I saw him, I saw him come into our lane. That horse was white with lather, lather all over him, and snorting and puffing like a steam engine. And you know what? Prince never ran away again. See what my dad did? He let him run. He whipped him home. God will do that with you, young people. You know that God will let you run if you decide you're going to run? You say, what do you mean? I mean, if you say, for example, you say, uh, I got an unsaved boyfriend, and I know God says don't marry him, but I'm going to marry him. You know what? God may just let you marry him. God could kill you and keep you from marrying him. God could kill him and keep you from marrying him. But God may just let you marry that unsaved boy or that unsaved girl. And then you find yourself in a peck of trouble. God may let you run into trouble. God let Jonah run till he landed in the belly of that fish. See, God let Samson run till he got the wrong girl and, and went into sin. And the gang got him and gouged his eyes out and he had to grind at a mill like an animal. God let that happen to him. See, God may just let you run. Just let you run into trouble, run into jail, run into the hospital. God may just let you run. And that's what he did with Samson. That's what he did with Jonah. That's what he did with David. And God may just do that for you. You know what? Listen, there was a boy, 15 years old, who was here at the ranch, and his brother had been here at the ranch. But listen to this. The brother, 16 years old, committed suicide. Would you think that any 16-year-old boy here would commit suicide? Are you looking down at something that you're writing about the messages, or are you just looking down because I don't have your attention over there? I, would like to, I really would like to have you get this. I really would like for, for, for you to get it. Now I forgot what I was talking. What was I talking about a minute ago, D Dean? Oh, yeah. Thank you. The boy was here at the ranch. When he was 16, he killed himself. Would you imagine at any 15, 16-year-old year old boy that you're looking at right now and it would someday, before he's 17 years old, kill himself? That boy did. And his 15-year-old brother told me about it. His brother came to camp right after this happened, and this is exactly what the brother said. He said, my brother killed himself by running with the gang, drinking liquor, and going to the dance. Now, God could have stopped him from running with that gang, and God could have stopped him from drinking that liquor, and God could have kept him from that dance, but God let him run right into the graveyard. And if you just decide to run and run away from God and do your own thing, God may just let you do it. So he said, don't be like a horse or a mule. He said, oh, let me guide you the easy way. I might have to take a fence post to get your attention. I might have to do something awful. I might have to put a bit and a bridle on you. If you decide to run from me, I may just let you run into all kinds of trouble. And then there's one more thing about horses. If a horse is incorrigible and will never give up, there's only one thing to do, and that's to get rid of them. You shoot them and make jello out of them, <laughs> or whatever they do with them. Make soap out of them. That's about all they're good for, soap. See? 
or dog food. <laughs> That's all they're good for. Oh, they could be used in a wonderful way. You're going to see a horse. Is music still here on the... Yeah? You're going to see a horse this afternoon that was at one time the world champion cutting horse. Beautiful horse. And absolutely, totally yielded to the man on his back. But out here, there are some... What's left of some bones of another horse on this same ranch that would not yield like music yielded and that horse was shot and buried. Well, you say, uh, the Lord wouldn't do that to me. He wouldn't kill me, would he? Oh, yes, he will. I want, you to, I want to show you a scripture and turn to this, will you? This is uh, 1 John chapter 5. Now, here's something maybe you didn't know was in the Bible. But here in 1 John chapter 5, it tells us that God kills people. Look at verse 16. 1 John chapter 5, way in the back of the Bible. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. I won't go into that part of it, but uh, there is a sin unto death. Look at that next phrase. There is a sin unto death, young people. What death is he talking about? He's talking about the death that land you in the morgue. He's talking about the death where they squirt embalming fluid all through you. He's talking about death where they drain the blood out of you. He's talking about the death where they bury you in a coffin under six feet of ground. That's the kind of death he's talking about, physical death. Now he says, there is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. In other words, you and I shouldn't go around and pray that God will kill people. See, God knows who he ought to kill and who, who he ought not kill. But as you read your Bible, boy, all through the Bible, you read about how God killed people. God killed them because they were like a horse. They were like a mule. They never gave up. They rebelled and rebelled and rebelled. I understand that this concept of the sin unto death may be a little difficult for you to grasp, for us to really wrap our minds around. Why would, why would God take such drastic measures well, as Dr. Paul just told us, sometimes we can be so difficult to communicate to that the best option for the will and glory of God is to just take us home, to just remove us from the human equation. You say, would a God of love do that? Friend, he is 100% love and 100% justice. Let me encourage you to join us tomorrow as Dr. Paul continues this thought. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day for his glory, and God bless. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.